welcome in this lecture we would start with a very interesting concept that is structural geology now what do we actually imply by the word structural geology structural geology is a branch of geology where we try to understand the rock structure now this rock structure is not permanent it changes and therefore understanding the rock structure becomes important i take a very simple example let's say you have a place x where you find silver there is another place y where you find um gold there is another place z where you find iron there is another place m where you find water bodies within the uh, geological structure or water deposits or you find hydrothermal products right or geothermal energy right take it as a simple one now why does it happen that these are not present universally everywhere now these things are present in certain areas because there are certain bedding planes or beddings which do contain silver or the rocks that contain gold or iron and so on and so forth now this is structural geology in itself talks about the formation how these rock structures were formed so three things to take a note formation the second is distribution and the third is the geometry of the rocks the word structural comes from a latin word structure that means to build and how is it built it is built by the means of tectonic forces now tectonic forces comes from a greek word tektos which again means a builder so these tectonic forces within the earth are builders now these tectonic folders uh, forces deform the existing structure of the earth let's say you have an existing structure there are tectonic forces it could be in the form of earthquake then there could be seismic forces for example volcano but these deform the existing structure of the uh, the ground and therefore there is what is called a change in the existing structure and it needs to be studied under the structural geography now why do we actually stru study structural geography the benefits of structural geography first it helps us to understand the crust of the earth we know in which parts do we find which minerals the economic geology the mineralogy we study with the help of structural geology the second important aspect that comes into line is understanding the mining patterns where can we mine where are the exact deposits of um, the various metals minerals that are found the exploration recently we have discovered lithium in the rezia district in jammu and kashmir and that actually is through understanding the geology of that area so it helps us to map it also help us to have the ground water recharge points artificially where do we have the beddings where water can be actually stored and ground water recharge points can be developed it also help us to build up engineering projects based on the soil structure whether it is sedimentary igneous or metamorphic we know in which area what kind of uh, engineering activities can be done and selection of an engineering site completion of an engineering project would require an in depth understanding of the structural geology also if we talk about the ancient civilizations for example harappan civilization along the indus river we had mesopotamian civilization we do have the mayas the incas the greek civilization the chinese civilization along the huango so all of these followed certain major rivers and when they are following certain major rivers they are following the geological structures of that region now in this lecture today we would focus only on two major aspects of structural geography that is the stress and strain the very fundamentals based on which we would understand the later topics the next topic that we would talk today is strike and dip as we would for, uh, proceed in our further lectures we would understand about folds types of folds faults 
linearity, lineations, conformity, unconformity. So those kind of topics we would cover as we proceed later in the sections on structural geology. So to begin with, let's say we have the two structures here. Now this as you could see in the picture was the original structure of the rock. Now because of the magma flow there has been a subsidence of the rock structure. So the strata of the rock changed. Originally it was this, the new position is this. And this led to change in the internal structure of the rock, right? And this is a really important thing to study. Similarly, this is the crust or the ocean body and it comes uh, slides past and you see a volcanic activity being generated here. So there is a change in the uh, geological structure and this change in the geological structure is really important for us to understand the formation, the geometry and ultimately uh, understanding the mining, the exploration activities in the given region. Now before we begin uh, to move on to the concept of stress and strain, let's talk about some general terminologies that we must be familiar with. The first is outcrop and incrop. Now what is outcrop? The structures which are formed as a result of the deposition of sediments onto a region are known as primary structures. Now these primary structures are really important. Now when there is a rock, how does the rock arrange itself? Now the rock arrange itself in layers. I have two of the um, remotes here. I use one remote and on the top of it, I place another remote. Now this is one bed. This is second bed. Now these two are separated by a line which is known as bedding plane. So between them two is the bedding plane. Let me move here. As you can see in the example, there are two separate layers, layer one and layer two. These are called as beds. Between the beds is the differentiation or the separation which we call as the bedding plane. Now sometimes it happens that they, these there are rock structures which are just one centimeter or less and these are known as lamination. What is lamination? A thin coat over let's say you have a certificate and you go to a Xerox shop and say that just put a plastic sheet over this. So how would it uh, the main idea is preservation. So these lamination actually help is just one centimeter small small thin thin layers and these arrange in a layered fashion this layered fashion is what is called as stratification right so beds bedding planes and laminations part of stratification now within this stratification we see that when the layer is arranged in horizontal way right this layering in the volcanic rock is because of the lava flow and it is called as what? It is called as primary foliation, right? Now, if it is in the igneous rock, it is called as primary foliation. If it is in the metamorphic rock, it is called as secondary foliation. So same thing, we call it as stratification when it is sedimentary rock. Primary foliation in igneous rocks, secondary foliation in metamorphic rock. And then in the secondary uh, foliation, what kind of changes do we see? We do see changes, for example, cleavage, uh, ciscosity, genosity, which we would understand later in the lectures as we proceed. So what are the outcrops and the incrops? Outcrops are the structures which are exposed onto the surface. So let's say... I have this as the earth surface. Now if this is a rock which is inside this, we call it as incrop. If it is, uh, here we have a tree. So this would help you understand that this is a surface where we have a tree, right? Now on this surface, if there is a rock below, we call it as incrop. But let's say this crop, uh, this rock is some like, something like this and appears partially on the surface, partially below it. The one over the surface is called as outcrop. The one under the surface is called as incrop. So the one with the cap on the top is the outcrop. The lower portion is the incrop that we see. So we understand what is outcrop and incrop. Then next is layering. Layering is the horizontal arrangement. So one 
layer on top of it you have another layer this layering is commonly seen with sedimentary rocks but not just with sedimentary rocks as we saw even with the igneous and the metamorphic rocks we do see foliations and these foliations are similar uh, to the arrangements that we see in layering then is intrusion and extrusion intrusion means igneous rocks which remain under the surface so this is the surface this is the magma now the rocks that remain beneath the surface are called as intrusive rocks and when there is an explosion the rock particles come out they deposit here you call it as extrusive rocks so the rocks which come out and deposit are called as extrusive rocks which live, remain below the surface are called as intrusive rocks so extrusive and intrusive clear the next is deformations deformation is any change in the existing structure it could be in terms of length area volume so anything which is undeformed right can become deformed and there can be many paths to have it i take a very simple example uh, i am taking for example a lecture in this room and there are students who want to attend this lecture now within this college campus students are coming from different path so let's say one student coming from this side to attend the lecture another from this side another from this side the third one zigzag so there are many paths to reach to this classroom now the same happens when we talk about the rock structure the undeformed and the deformed rock so undeformed rock is the original rock now when you have pressure being applied there could be pressure from this side this side this side there can be the change in the structure of the rock and that is what is called as deformation now this deformation is attained through many paths there could be many ways of reaching the final rock structure that is there and these many paths which lead to deformation are really important but when it was individual i can say this came from here this came from here this came from here and he came from here what happens in the rock in rock each mineral is not separate right so they are glued together they are joined together they are attached together as one rock so it's the complete rock mass that would move it's not that the individual particles would move however we do understand deformations at micro level and this is what is known as the micro tectonics for example i take the whole rock and i say there has been pressure from both side and this rock bends out so let's say i have this sheet